to the Gospel of Matthew. But we're going to just read the 24th verse. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, the 24th verse. Hear the word of the Lord. No one can be a slave of two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and of money. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just for a few moments, we want to discuss today and preach today from this subject, who owns you? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, you can't have two masters. You can't have two masters. So who Ooh. owns you? Owns you. Give God a praise. Beginning of our text in the 19th verse, Jesus admonishes all those who are listening not to value material things over heavenly things. In other words, do not value perishable things over imperishable things. For what or who we value most is where our commitments, devotions, and hearts are. Amen. What or who we are committed to and have given our hearts to is our God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Mm. You see, because the proof is in how we live, not in just what we say. Right, right. You can say you love God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. You could say, and when you get up and speak in the church, one of the greatest lies that are spoken is this. Uh, giving honor to God who is the head of my life. The question is, is he really? It's easy to say it. It's another thing to live it. Right. But some of us, our actions demonstrate that something or somebody else is the head of our lives and not Yahweh, not Jesus. We can say that the Lord, Yahweh, Elohim, Jesus, is our God, but do our actions stay the state? The same. Do people see Jesus in us, in our walk, and in our talk, and in our commitment? Quiet up in here. Is Jesus really the heads of our lives? Turn to your name and say, really? Really? Because material things are temporary. Right, right. But heavenly things are eternal. Amen. Is Jesus really the heads of our lives? Is he really our first priority? Or is it something temporary? And you see, temporary things tend to disappoint you. You're right about that. Temporary things tend to let you down. Temporary things tend to be inconsistent mm -hmm. in their help to you. But does anybody here know somebody that's consistent in his love, that is eternal in his love, and never breaks a promise, and will never let you down, and never disappoint you? That's right. That's right. Amen. The problem is, is that some of us, we trust and things that don't last, rather than trusting the one who can provide forever. Y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. We will break our necks to make sure that we're at the job 
on time, but straggle in the church late because we put more faith in our job taking care of us than Jesus being our provider. Hallelujah. But how many know you can get laid off from your job? Your job can fold. Your job can close up. You can show up to work one day, prepared to put in a good day's work, even get there early and find it locked and shut down. My God. My God, that's the truth. And then we begin to cry as we're wondering <laughs> how we're going to pay our bills. How are we going to take care of our families? How are we going to make it later on <laughs> in this same chapter? Jesus answers the question. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything else you need will be added unto you. Amen. we got to learn to put our faith and trust in that which is eternal. Because, beloved, when we want to recognize it or not, we can come dressed in our Sunday best, wearing our uniforms, uh, sitting in uh, our seat where we think we belong uh, because we've got a title in the church. Uh, but I come to tell you, if we trust anything or anyone over the Lord, over God, over Jesus Christ, we commit idolatry. Amen. Uh, we might want, want to admit it, but some of us got some idols in our house. Some of us got some idols that we glorify and that we serve and that we're more committed to than we are Jesus. Who our God is. And with some of us, that's with a capital G. And with some of us, it's with a small g. Who our God is, is who we hold on tightly. Some of us will let a ministry go, but we're going to hold on to our man tightly. Mm. We're going to hold on to our woman tightly. We're going to hold on to our job tightly. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, we'll hold on to our family tightly, but we won't, won't, won't really care much about our ministries in the church. Hallelujah. We'll break our necks and come to work sick, coughing, hacking, full of cold and sickness. But if we just get a little sniffle or a little runny nose, we talk about can't make it to church today, not feeling good. At least I got one witness in the house. Okay, two. Praise the Lord. What? Two out of 40 ain't, ain't good. Somebody say man. Uh, in Jewish culture, generous people have a good eye and can see well. The text talking about the good eye being able to see well and being a, a, a vision of light. But stingy people have a bad eye. What it's talking about is moral blindness. When Jesus is not sure, God, don't you know that you see things funny and differently from folk who are serving the Lord? Huh? That's why people that truly love Jesus are very generous. Because they have faith knowing that the God that gave them what they have, if they give freely to others, God will continue to supply right. their every need. Right. Amen. Amen. But folk who worship money as God are really, really tight fisted. Hallelujah. Scared to see. even put a dollar in the offering plate. Scared to even buy somebody a happy meal. Scared to give any a bit of their money away. Right, right. But they don't see well. Why? Because they're in darkness. Why? Because people that worship money 
that idolize money are capable of doing all kinds of ungodly things. Can I get some help in here? Will sell, 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 will put their own children into prostitution. Will turn their backs on their own parents. Hallelujah. Will sell drugs to the children in their community. Why? Because they idolize money. Money is their God. Will preach false doctrine in the church. Giving folk what their itching ears want to hear so the pews can be full and their pockets can be fat. Hallelujah. But they are in darkness. Why? Because the Lord Yahweh, Jesus Christ is not their God. Money is. Hallelujah. That's right. Folk who know better mm -hmm. preaching and teaching falsehood to make the folk in the pews happy. So they can drive around in their fine and fancy cars and living in big mansions. Hallelujah. But the Bible said, what is it for you to gain the entire world, all the money and Fort Knox and beyond, and lose your soul? For no one walking in darkness will inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So if God, if the if money is your God, you better live it up as long as you can. Hallelujah. Because it's going to come a time when you're going to have to stand before God. And God is going to tell you, even if you say, I cast out devils in your name. I healed the sick in your name. I had big cathedrals in your name. I had packed churches in your name. Jesus is going to say to you, that God from me do of iniquity, but I never knew you. Oh. Oh. Darkness. Darkness. That's why the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Can't see. Darkness on the inside. Darkness all around us when we don't acknowledge who the true and living God is. So the question is, beloved, who owns us? A slave, a servant can only have one master, one owner. Who owns us. There can only be one God we truly love and trust and serve. We can't have two gods and say that we love them both the same. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus said that if you love your mother and father, sister and brother, husband and wife, and even your own life more than you love me, you're not worthy of me. If Jesus is not going to be the only God of your life, he's not going to be the God of your life at all. We put anything over Jesus. That's our God. Right. And why is that important? Because one day you're going to need God. And God is going to point you to those things that you put as God to be your deliverer. If money is your God and you lose your job and you so broke you can't even pay attention, Jesus is going to tell you, well, go and pray to your job because it was clear you put your job over me. That's your God. Well, your job owns you. There's some folk in the church. It's clear your job owns you. The slightest thing can happen in the church and you're ready to run out, stop doing your ministry, stop singing, lose your joy, won't praise, sitting there like a bump on the log, like you'd rather be somewhere else. Hallelujah. But when it comes to your job, your boss, your co-workers can cuss you out, but you don't quit. Oh. You still there? 
When the boss comes by, you might have a problem in your face, but you turn it into a smile. Because that's your God. But here you expect everybody to be perfect. And if somebody shows the slightest bit of humanity, maybe they're going through something so they don't speak to you like you think you deserve to be spoken to. You want to leave the church. I know I'm hitting somebody. You should see how y'all are looking at me. Your family can treat you like a dog, but when you need them, if they have a family reunion and it hits on Sunday, you'll leave church to go to be with your family. You don't quit on them. Come on in here looking at me like you're looking, like I'm lying or something. <laughs> That's your God. So when you get sick and you need a miraculous healing, ask your uncle to heal you. Ask your aunt to heal you. Ask your daddy to heal you. Ask your mama to heal you. Ask your best friend to heal you. Ask your boyfriend or girlfriend that you shocking with. Ask them to heal you. Because you put them above God. You put them above God's word. You put them above God's commandments. That's your God. Why do you think it is that some folk in the church find it hard to get their prayers answered? Because you can't make, you can't be switching back and forth. Hallelujah. It's Monday, so my man is my God. It's Tuesday, my job is my God. It's Wednesday, my money is my God. It's Thursday, my mama is my God. Friday, hallelujah, my daddy is my God. On, on Saturday, I'm my own God. And then on Sunday morning, Jesus! Oh, no, no! Hallelujah! It's either Jesus all week long or Jesus not at all. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he ain't gone. He's either, you're either married to him, you either belong to him, or you don't. Jesus ain't going to be your Sunday morning flame. So who owns us? <laughs> Hallelujah. Who is it that you really trust? Oh, it's easy enough to sing, I will trust in the Lord until I die. But do you really, do we really trust him? When it comes between our, our family, our money, our livelihood and God, who is it that we really trust? If you were to lose your job tomorrow, would you be well, ready to give up and thinking that you have uh, no other way to be provided for? Or would you trust in God uh, who said that if you seek his kingdom, he will provide for you? I want to know who do you really trust? Hallelujah. Who really owns you? this morning hallelujah but I testify that I will trust in the eternal one I will trust in the almighty I will trust in the creator our redeemer and savior yes, Jesus Lord. Christ uh, maybe this word isn't doing anything for you but it's encouraging me to keep on trusting in the Lord yes. I will trust in the Lord I will That's trust right. in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Hallelujah. I will, regardless of trials and tribulations, and sometimes I may have to walk alone, but I'm never really alone. Because Jesus, he walks with me, right. and he talks right. with me, and he tells me. So I will, I, I, I will, Amen. I will trust in the Lord, and I will stay on the battlefield, I will stay on the battlefield until I, until I die, until I die, yeah. Yeah.